Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about how to work less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy the work that you do and to enjoy your vacation time. Hi, it's Sean, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation. It's just about a month to go before Christmas. Yeah, 25th of December, and ho, 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 and that's Santa that comes along. But there is one Santa that we have here, which is a resident Santa, except that all the ho, ho, ho doesn't happen in December. It happens in April, on the 1st of April, to be precise. And this episode is all about Renuka, the prankster, that Renuka who sends out all the chocolate, that Renuka who writes all those notes, that Renuka who pops up at the end of the webinars just to say hi and then disappears very quickly. That same Renuka is quite the menace on the 1st of April. Why bring it up now in December? Well, because we're psychotactics. We do crazy stuff. So here we go. This is what Renuka, <laughs> this is the kind of damage that she can do on a single day. So let's start out with, I think there are five different stories just of April Fool's Day, and it's all down to Renuka. Let's start off with the first one, and this is about the trip to Singapore. When we make a trip, whether it's for a holiday or for work, what we tend to do is break up the journey. Last year, we were flying out to our Munich workshop, and we stopped in Singapore for a few days. Our flight took off on the 31st of March, and we were in Singapore on the 1st of April. And that's when we got a message from my sister-in-law, Audrey, and she said, oh, you guys just missed a big storm here in Auckland. So now Renuka's away from Auckland. She shouldn't be playing her April Fool's Day jokes, but no, she has to do it even long distance. And so she texts my other sister-in-law, Sonia, and says, oh, we've had such a miserable night. And so Sonia texts back and says, what happened? And she goes, you know that storm? We've been stuck at the airport the whole time. And Sonia comes back and goes, oh, you poor things. At which point Renuka explodes and goes, April Fool. And of course, you know that you've been pranked. Which takes us to the second one, which is this year. And even the coronavirus doesn't stop her. Earlier in 2020, we'd been to Rajasthan and Goa in India. And whenever we go somewhere, Renuka goes and brings gifts for the family. She goes and brings two or three small things, jewelry, sweets, all kinds of things for the family and for our nieces. And if you trace the timeline of our return back to New Zealand, it was almost like we were just ahead of the coronavirus well, we left India and kind of India shut down. We got to Singapore. We left Singapore and Singapore shut down. And we got to New Zealand and there was no restriction in place. But we decided to self-isolate just in case. And then all of New Zealand went into lockdown. The streets are empty. The stores are empty. Everything is really quiet. And then April 1st rolls along which coincidentally is about the same time that we've got out of our own personal kind of lockdown. And so Renuka texts her brother and says, you know, I brought some stuff for you guys and I don't know how long this food stuff will last. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave it at the post box at the end of the driveway. And Renuka has been aware that her brother has been very careful during this coronavirus outbreak. He wore masks, he had his gloves, he had his hand sanitizer. He was completely into it. And so she said, don't worry about it. 
I've kept it there. I've wiped it down. You can pick it up anytime during the day and then you can take it from there. As you'd expect, he fell for the bait. A little later, he goes and he opens the post box and there's nothing there. And he texts Renuka back and says, I don't know what happened. Maybe someone took it. There's nothing there. Bing bong. April Fool's Day. And even while that joke is in progress, she is now on her sister's case. So that's Audrey. And Audrey and her husband Mangesh have been building our websites. They maintain everything. They keep psychotactics going, literally. Anyway, Renuka continues her text barrage. She texts Audrey and says, I don't know what's happened with the website. I can't see psychotactics at all. And I've looked on different browsers. I think there's something wrong. Now, April Fool's Day was on Wednesday, and it wasn't the weekend or anything, but I think Audrey was taking it easy on that day, and she's jolted by this text, gets to her computer, starts looking as to why the website could be down, and then goes on to multiple browsers, does a lot of checks, and finally comes back and goes, I can't see any problem. The website seemed to be working just fine. And there you go. Renuka goes, April Fool's Day. And Audrey is really upset because, as you know, it's quite a serious matter to say that all the websites are down and she's sent Audrey into a real state of panic. It's not just like a joke. It's uh, like red alert. And anyway, Renuka is jumping on this side despite Audrey getting really upset. I think she was upset several days later and she's probably listening to this podcast, and she's probably miffed to this day. And my friend Doug Casement, who also is involved with technology, says, yes, that's not a joke to pull. But Renuka is Renuka. Renuka doesn't care as long as she gets her April Fool's Day joke perfectly right. She doesn't stop there, and kids are not out of bounds because her next target is Kara. Now, there is a problem with Kara, and that is Kara is very sharp already. She's like a mini Renuka in the first place, so she's expecting this. Plus, her father has already been pranked early in the morning, so she has this force shield around her all day long. Renuka tries multiple kind of jokes to get to Kara. No, nothing's happening. And even at 9.30 at night, Renuka is still on Kara's case. But she has a really good idea. And that involves our other niece, Marsha. If you've been reading the news, you probably read that New Zealand has handled the lockdown a little better than many countries. And the reason for that was everybody just stayed home. Nobody fought back or did anything and they just stayed home and they followed the instructions that were given by the health officials. Now this was a problem because it was a big birthday for Marsha and everybody was really sad that they couldn't be around. So I decided let's put together a little video tribute like the stuff that we really like about Marsha. And I got her parents, I got her grandma and the whole family to just shoot a little video and send it to me. I would collate it, put it together and then we could send it to Marsha and then have this, not just a virtual Zoom thing, but actually a tribute that she could see why we loved her. And one of the videos had to be made by Kira. So at 9.30 at night, Renuka gets in touch with Kira and says, I don't know, you'll have to speak to Sean. He's been really upset about your video because there is something wrong and he can't get it together and it's Marsha's birthday and we're running out of time and you better get in touch with him. All of this is happening by text because Renuka can't help herself. She would start giggling on the phone. So all of it is happening by text and Kara falls for it. Another victim. And that wrapped up her 2020 action plan. 
But don't go away, because there are still more at the end of this podcast in the still listening section. They are funnier than these. So let's find out what's happening in Psychotactics land and then get to the end. There are just two things left in this year. The first is the re-release of the website components. Many years ago, I wrote this book and it required a uh, version 2.0. So if you're looking for website components, you know that I've been putting it off for months on end. And yesterday on a webinar with 5000 BC members, someone point blank asked me, Sean, are you gonna write that? When is it gonna be ready? And I said, two weeks from now. That was a dangerous statement to make, but two weeks from now, that's gonna be ready. So look for website components, look for that notification. If you already own version 1, version 2 will be offered to you as an upgrade, small fee. And if you don't, well, this is a good one to get. It's really good. And that's because it's not just rewritten. It's not just I took stuff from version 1, put it in version 2, but rather I started from scratch. And you'll find that it's far superior in every way. Having said that, the only other thing is the pre-sale course, which is on the 22nd of November. Go to psychotactics.com look for pre-sale, and there in the midst of it all is this beauty of a course which shows you how you don't need to create a product in advance, you need to pre-sell it in advance, and then you sell the product or the service. And this is how we've been running Psychotactics for pretty much 20 years now. And it's worked for us better than ever before. So we put it together in the course and I think you'll like it. So that's on the 22nd of November. There are only a limit of 25 copies, I think. And that's it. And with that, we wrap 2020 up. In 2021, we have the Info Products Home Study course, which is on the 23rd of Jan. And ta-da, we're going to have a copywriting course. You want to call it whatever you want. You can call it sales page. You can call it copywriting. You can call it whatever you want. But essentially, it is the page where you put your product and then you have to describe your product. So for instance, say we have a product like the Brain Audit. We have to sell it. We have to put a sales page together. How do we put all the elements that make that sales page? And if you decide, hey, I want to be a copywriter, as in you want to create other people's sales pages, well, this is the same template. It's not about the whole journey of copywriting. It's not about how to get clients. It's not about how to sustain those clients. That's all a marketing thing. This course, and for now, it's a live course, it's focused precisely on how you put that sales page together in three days or less. And this is if you're not a copywriter at all. Copywriters take, I don't know, a couple of weeks at least to put a sales page together. And you can do it in three days because we have a bottom-up system. We start out from the bottom and go to the top instead of everybody else that goes from top to bottom. And that's in mid-Feb. We'll give you more information as we go along. And that's pretty much it. That's me, Sean D'Souza, saying bye for now. Bye-bye. Still listening? Of course you're listening. You want to know those other stories of Renuka the prankster. And this one goes all the way back to Kuwait. When she was little, Renuka grew up in Singapore and then went to Kuwait, and that's where she spent a large part of her life. And she'd call up these neighbors. So they, they lived in an apartment block, and she'd call up the neighbors on the top floor, so one floor above, and she'd call neighbor one and say, oh, there's a parcel for you, and it's left at our doorstep. And then she'd call up the second neighbor, and she'd say, there's a parcel for you, and it's at our doorstep, and you might as well come and pick it up right now. And so you have these two sets of neighbors coming down the stairs to her doorstep, to Renuka's doorstep, to find there's nothing there. They ring the bell. Renuka's mother opens the door and goes, what's the matter? And they go, oh, 
someone said there was a parcel at a doorstep, and then the second neighbor shows up, of course, and suddenly you have all these neighbors going, oh, there's a parcel at a doorstep, but there is no parcel here. And then suddenly one of them goes, we have left our apartments, and maybe someone's trying to rob us. So there's massive panic. Meanwhile, Renuka's laughing her head off inside. And of course, everybody's annoyed because that's not the behavior that a kid should indulge in. Uh, but yeah, that's Renuka for you. But here's the final one. And this one is a beauty. Renuka's father, often he would get out from the bathroom and then he would go to his wardrobe in his undies and he would open up the wardrobe and then look at all his clothes, his shirts, and he, he loved to put all his shirts together, all ironed, all on hangers, and then his trousers and, and he, it would be like, okay, what am I going to wear today? One day she sneaks up behind him, takes a photo, he's totally obsessed with what am I going to wear today, doesn't see her. She takes, I don't know, maybe one photo, maybe a couple of photos. This is a secondhand story, so I don't know. She takes the photos, gets out the roll of film, gives it to him, to her father, to develop. He gives it to the photo booth, doesn't look at what photos are printed, because, of course, they're Renuka's photos, and he gives it back to her. This is all the preparation for April Fool's Day, which is coming up around the bend. On April Fool's Day, she puts it in an envelope and keeps it outside the door and rings the bell and runs inside. And Renuka's father used to be the one to open the door. Most of the time, he would be opening the door. And he opens the door, and there on the base of the door is a letter addressed to him. He opens the envelope and he's shocked because there's a photo of him taken from the back, of course, and there he is in his undies. And so he rushes to the window to look out from the apartment to see who could be looking in and who could be taking pictures from another apartment block. And of course, Renuka is guffawing her head off elsewhere shouting out April Fool's Day. And that's Renuka for you. I suspect you already knew that she was a prankster, but now you know that she's a super prankster on April Fool's Day. And I thought that would cheer you up. And that's the end of this podcast. We'll say bye for now, and we'll see you in 5000 BC. Bye-bye. <laughs>